So welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you the changes to the old standard out of nowhere and dive into what's going on with the Harmony 2. My last couple of videos have all centred around learning your 251s in different keys and I think this song's a good song to learn for looking at those types of things. I'm going to show you the chords. Everything you see is available as a PDF including a separate PDF with the chord shapes if you need those. Um, I'll talk through the Harmony and talk about stripping away some of the chords as well as you might find you're here in some versions. So here's the chart on the screen. This is your typical 32 bar standard. And for me, the form is A, B, 1, A, B, 2. We're in the key of G, one sharp. And that means the following chords. You know, you normally have, if we harmonize in sevenths, G major seven, A minor seven, B minor seven, C major seven, D seven, E minor seven, F sharp minor seven plus five, G major seven. Scan your eye over the page and oh, we've got quite a few of those chords, but not all of them. And we've got some chords out of key. Let's take a look at the first eight bars. So we have G major seven for two bars, B flat minor seven to E flat seven, back to G, and then B minor seven, E seven. First off, what's going on there? Well, we start on chord one. And hopefully you can hear when we go to these two chords, that's out of key. Quite a surprise move. What's going on here? Well, what's the relationship between G and B flat? Well, we're moving up from the G to a minor third, which is a very common bass movement, by the way. But What's more interesting, not the relationship between G and B flat. I suppose there's the relationship that B flat's a minor third, so it kind of almost creates the feel of going major to minor. But what's more interesting is the fact that B flat minor seven and E flat seven is a two five from the key of A flat major. So it's kind of like we've moved up, when well, no, it is not kind of like, we have moved up in key by a semitone to the key of A flat major. I know there's no A flat major chord there, but that is the B flat minor and the E flat is the two chord and five chord of that key. So let's let's listen to it again. You'll hear it move up. So here's the G. Here we are up a semitone. Like if I play a G major scale for two bars and an A flat major scale, you'll hear it. It creates that effect. Then we're back to G. Chord one. B minor 7 to E7. Again, that is a 2 5 from the key of A, but B minor 7 is also chord 3 in the key of G. What's the E7 doing there? Well, the E7 is important for the next chord. So let's look at the next eight bars. So B1 goes like this A minor, B minor 7 flat 5, E7, A minor. Then E flat 7, like from the A section, A minor 7, D7, which would take us back to do another A section going resolving to a G. So the end of that first eight bars, we went B minor 7 to E7. Now this is a secondary dominant here, this E7. You think about the relationship between E7 and A minor, well, it's the dominant of A. So I've called it the five of two, because A minor is the two chord in this key, and E7 is the five chord of an A chord. So it's resolving nicely to that. And then you might recognize, you know, B minor seven flat five, E7, that's a, also you could think of it if we're thinking about in relation to A minor, it's a two five. Back to A minor. For me, this line really is like a shift to A minor. It's like, oh, we've hit A minor, that's where we're resting for now. This is like a minor two, five, one here to A minor. And then that is completely wiped away when we hit this E flat seven, which as we saw earlier is the five chord in the key of A flat. So it's, whoa, it's quite a movement away. And then we get quite a normal progression of A minor seven, D seven, which is a two, five, one in the key of G in the parent key. So let's hear those first two sections. So we're going G, chord one, then we go up a semitone to the key of A flat with a two five, back down to G, then 
and we're working our way to get to this A minor chord via this E7, which is out of key technically. A minor 7, then the 2, 5, 1, A minor. And then this real, you know, out of key E flat 7 tench needs to go somewhere. We resolve it by a 2, 5, 1 in the key of G. Takes us back for another A section. This is A2. Same as the uh, first one. We now hit B2, which has some slight variations. So for A2, we land on that A minor 7, the E7 from the A section takes us perfectly to there. We do the 2 5 1 again, but in the fourth bar, we go to this C minor 6, which is the minor 4 chord. So in the key of G, the fourth chord is C, and a real common thing to do is to make the four chord a minor because it, it, it has a real kind of pull and real emotional feel to it. Listen to when it comes in. So coming up now. Quite sad. Then we hit chord three, B minor seven, a diminished chord built off B flat, and we call that the flat three diminished. A minor seven, that's the two. D7, that's our five. We can go to G6 here quite often. I think that's what the real book says. We could do G major seven equally, it's fine. And then A minor seven, D7, and two five to kick off again. So much like the title of the song, some of those chords come out of nowhere. Forgive me for saying that. Like that B flat minor seven, that E flat seven. So when you're soloing over this, you've got these, you know, it starts out on chord one, very stable. <laughs> Then that two five one from A flat, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to go with that. So like one, two, three, four, one. So in terms of relating this to the two fives, um, so from my last few lessons, you know, the A minor seven D seven is your, you know, your parent two five of the of the key we're in. But then we've got that B flat minor seven to E flat seven, the two five from A flat, although you don't ever play the A flat chord, it doesn't resolve. You've then also got the B minor seven to E seven, which is technically a, a two five from A, and that does go to an A, albeit an A minor. We've also got B minor seven flat five E seven, A minor, which is a minor two five one in, in A minor. So I think there's some, some great examples of them. Now, a couple of other things to talk about in regards to this one. Sometimes the chords can be simplified, never a bad thing, and we can take away the two. So say for that, those opening two lines, you could just go G and then E flat seven, or even E flat nine, G, then E seven. And I could take away the B minor seven flat five. Let's go A minor, E seven, A minor. Like here, really, this E flat seven. Some people would play B flat minor before it. Then we could just go D seven if you don't want the, the two. So you can sometimes, you know, it might be desirable to take away the two chord um, to have less going on. When you think about this, it makes it a lot easier for soloing. There's less chords to think about. Uh, so just an interesting thing that happens sometimes. I think in some of the earlier versions I've listened to of this song, they don't have that two chord in. Maybe for the A minor seven, but I think quite often it's common in earlier versions you know, around the time the song was writ written and recorded for people to play, say, G6, probably rather than G major 7. And then just E flat 7 instead of the B flat minor 7. And then E7. Just really depends on who you're playing with, what they play and, you know, but going back to, to soloing, if it makes your life easier over that B flat minor seven to E seven, you can E flat seven. You can just sing E flat seven if you like, and it will work just fine. It'd be a fun one to also work on your chord tone. Say G major seven, and then B flat minor seven to E flat seven, and then same G major seven. But then you move that arpeggio up a semitone for the B minor seven to the E seven. So it's probably a, a good thing to work on your chord tones because you know you've got that 
two five moving up a semitone, B flat minor, E flat seven, then in the next line it's B minor, E seven. You know, it'd be be good for you to to work on that. Don't forget you can get the chord shapes, the chart, the Roman numeral analysis in as a PDF over on my website, Jazz Guitar with Andy, link in the description beneath. If you gain value from today's lesson, then uh, hit that like button. Um, there's a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page also in the description. Uh, if you've got any questions, any comments, then do leave them below. If you missed my last couple of lessons on the 251s, which I think really helps play tunes like this, then uh, be sure to check those out. I'll put them both on the screen now for you to uh, click on if you want to check those out. Anyway, Jazz Guitar Lessons every Wednesday and Saturday. Be sure to tune in next time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.